Time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Why in the world are you down here, Dollar? Your train leaves in 45 minutes. Well, I'm taking a quick refresher course in ancient history. You're sending me out to find a missing archaeologist, aren't you? Well, I want to be able to talk his language in case I find him alive. Edmund O'Brien in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Great Corinthian Life and Liability Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during my investigation of the disappearance of Bruce Lambert, the archaeologist who never should have left his tomb. Expense account item one, $7.50, railway and taxi fare from my Hartford apartment to room 317 Brighton Arms, New York City, a hotel whose front rooms had a depressing view of an 81st Street mortuary. Miss Lambert? Yes, please come in, Mr. Dollar. She was tall without awkwardness, had the physique of an athlete, but still with softness. And a golden tan made her seem out of place, set against the snow heaped on the sill outside the windows. Thank you for coming, Mr. Dollar. I realize that mine was a rather unusual request to make of an insurance company. Not at all, Miss Lambert. The company doesn't want to lose a policyholder any more than you want to lose a brother. But there are a lot of good private detectives in New York. I couldn't afford one. I had thought of notifying the police, but I realized that Bruce's case would be just one of many to them. They're so impersonal. If there's a chance of any notoriety. Miss Lambert, if you mean that for some reason you'd rather the police didn't find him, you'd better tell me about it. Yes, of course I was going to. I don't see how it could make any difference. Please sit down. Maybe we'd better start way back at the beginning, huh? That would be in Egypt, wouldn't it? Yes. In the desert some hundred miles west of Thebes. My brother's an archaeologist, and he'd uncovered some ruins. It was quite an important discovery, something about the 12th dynasty. I, I don't know much about it. You were with him? Yes, I didn't spend much time at the excavation site. I stayed in the village. But the reason the police might make it difficult is that Bruce discovered some relics that he didn't declare to the authorities there. You mean he swiped them? Well, if you're in the habit of using extreme bluntness, I suppose you could put it that way. All right, I'm sorry. Please, Mr. Dollar, this is quite unpleasant for me. If Bruce had stolen all the relics, you wouldn't expect it to make any difference in how I felt about his disappearance, would you? Well, I'm afraid I can't do anything for you. I've got to know these things if I'm going to help you. Wait. I'm... I'm sorry. I'll tell you everything I know. All right. What were those relics that your brother didn't declare? Well, I'm not sure how many there were. There was some statuary. An obsidian head of some old king and... Then there was a scarab. It was supposed to have been the official seal of this king. Do you know how valuable this stuff is? I'm afraid that it might be very valuable in some circles. That's what I was afraid of, that someone harmed Bruce or even... But there's so many things to be afraid of. He isn't strong. Maybe even his mind... He was injured quite severely in a traffic accident in Alexandria just before we left Egypt. I've got to find out what could have happened to him. Oh, come on, now. We, we can't find out this way. What does your brother look like? Is he light or dark? He's a snapshot. Oh. He's blonde. His hair is straight and was quite long when I last saw him. And that was four days ago? Yes. The day our ship docked, I was arranging for my luggage... He just disappeared. What else? What's his bill? Slight, medium, heavy? Slight, I'd say. What about his clothes? Well, he was wearing a dark blue suit and a gray overcoat. The right sleeve of both would be empty because his right arm and shoulder are in a cast. Uh Uh-huh. A traffic accident. Yes, both were fractured. I wish I were able to be more help. But I've told you everything I know. He just vanished. Did he... 
Did he have any enemies that no. you know of? No, there's not even that. I can't let myself lose hope. But what can we do? How do you start looking for somebody with so little to go on? Before I answered her question, we started at the beginning again. The second run-through was pretty much like the first. But disappearance from a foreign ship in the port of New York is not as easy as the telling of it. I left the troubled Marsha, checked into an eighth-floor room in the Brighton Arms, where a phone call told me the North Fleet had already sailed. No hope of information there. So I headed for the U.S. Customs Office. Good afternoon. Mr. Nixon? Yes? Well, my name is Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. The girl outside said you could help me. I'd like to get some information on a passenger who arrived from Alexandria on the North Fleet. A uh, North Fleet? Well, I'd have to know the day of arrival and the name of the line. Uh, it was four days ago. They'd made it... Uh, that would make it the 20th. It's a British ship. A uh, North Fleet. Well, no. Um, what was the passenger's name? Lambert. Bruce Lambert. Did he uh, clear any luggage through customs? Bruce Lambert. Yeah. Witness the examination of one piece of luggage, a suitcase. Personal effects, one piece of statuary purchased in Alexandria. No duty. Uh, what address did he give you? Bruce Lambert. Uh, no street number. No hotel. The Brighton Arms. Oh, the Brighton Arms. Uh, well, don't count on that. <laughs> Expense account item two, $30, which, with my ID card, helped impress the cab drivers who worked the entrance to the pier where the North Fleet had docked. Checking these cabs took the whole afternoon, and midway through it, I realized I wasn't the only one interested in that particular hack stand. I wasn't sure at what moment I'd actually noticed him. He was doing a very bad job of hiding behind a Journal American on the other side of the street. All I could see was the lower half of an overcoat, the same of some razor-sharp trousers and some pointed shoes. But I began to feel his eyes looking at me as I went on with my questioning. That finally paid off through the mouth of driver number 782. You know, you meet all kinds in this business. Some you forget and uh, some others you remember. Yeah, well, do you remember a guy with his arm and shoulder in a cast? And something you learn in this business. That's to read people's faces. You get to know a deadbeat before he gets a chance to deadbeat you. And you catch on if a guy is scared of something. Well, if he was afraid of something, it's not me. He's been reported missing by his sister. I've been hired to find him. How much does ten bucks buy? You know, maybe he don't want to be found. Is that what you think? Sure. He paid me more to climb up than you offered. Well, I've got more. What are you going to do with him? I want to talk to him. I want to find out if he's all right. If he wants to stay lost, that's his business, not mine. How's 25? Get in, my boy. Get very far from here. Our destination turned out to be an old red brick hotel near 39th Street between 10th and 11th Avenue. And it occurred to me that as an archaeologist, Lambert was running true to form. He even used some ruins to hold up in. One $5 bill bought the information from the room clerk that Lambert was out of his room, and another bought a pass key that let me in. The first thing to catch my eye when I switched on the light was a black piece of statuary shining dully on a chipped bureau, a crowned head with exaggerated features, sculptured in obsidian. I posed myself this riddle. If it was so valuable, why didn't Lambert take better care of it? But before I had a chance to try for the answer, a foot nudged the door open behind me. As might be expected, it was wearing a pointed shoe and was followed into the room by a slight yellow ivory-skinned man who rather resembled the black statue. I must thank you for leading us to the hiding place. Where is he? Well, that depends on who he's hiding from. It looks like 
It's you. Perhaps it is that you do not know where he is. Yeah. Perhaps. I followed your taxi after you talked with those drivers. That was very smart. Where did you think I expected you to go? What's your interest in Lambert? You were employed by the girl to find him. How much does she pay you? I never talk money with a stranger. Or perhaps we will not be strangers for long. The point of importance is that you have not yet found him. Mr. Drummond will pay you $2,000 to do so. Mr. Drummond is generous, but what makes you so sure I haven't found Lambert? Because he is not here. But well, that only means he's someplace else. Please. I have no wish for violence. Well, then put that thing away. In the first place, gunfire, even in this neighborhood, is going to bring the law. In the second place, that's a lady's gun. One of those handbag jobs. You know, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for carrying it. Please, I have no wish to use it. Then get rid of it. <laughs> I hate little men who try to play bully. There was more than that behind my fist. I figured I could learn to know him better if he was quietly stretched out on the floor. I was half right. An Egyptian passport told me that his name was Ammon Hicksus. Hometown, Alexandria. There was nothing else. I could turn Hicksus over to the police on an assault charge, or I could wait until he woke up and try knocking some information out of him. But I didn't do either. I left him there in the lobby. I gave a message to the room clerk for Lambert, telling him to stay out of his room when he came back and to phone me at the Brighton Arms. Who is it? Dollar. Oh, just a second. Is there any news? Did you learn anything, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, I made some progress. I met Ammon Hicksus. <gasps> You told me your brother didn't have any enemies. That little Egyptian is out looking for him with a gun. Why'd you lie to me? I have no right to ask you to believe me now. That's so true. But I wish you would. Please come here and sit down. No, no, thanks. You sit there and I'll stand here. I, I think I'll be less inclined to believe you from here. That's not fair. I know. I wasn't fair with you either. I want to be. But there are some things I just can't tell you. Why not? Well, I can't tell you that, either. No, oh, nuts. Women like you make everything tougher than it should be. You demand all, but you give nothing. You ask to be trusted, and you won't trust. You make yourselves look soft when you're as hard as steel. You've got warmth, but you, you only turn it on when you get something out of it. You're wrong. I was trying to help him. Or us. I had to lie. Look, I started this thing wanting to help you. Uh, there was something personal about it. <laughs> But you wanted me to do things your way and not mine. Well, we just stopped doing that. Please leave me alone. Just go away. Go back to Hartford and forget you were ever here. I wish I could. But I'm working for an insurance company looking for a missing policy holder. Well, I'll be up in my room if you decide to help me find it. <laughs> Right. This is Bruce Lambert. I got your message to call. Where are you now? Uh, uh, not so fast. There were two attempts on my life while I was on my way here from Alexandria. I'm not anxious to tell anybody where I am. Uh, how did you get into this? Marsha called your insurance company when you took the run out. They hired me. Uh, good for Marsha. Uh, is she all right? Well, that depends on your point of view. I suppose she's being the helpful sister to you, but for me, she's done nothing but act mysterious. Well, I don't get it. She won't tell the truth about you. I hope you do better. She... Uh, she told you she was my sister? Well, sure she did. Why shouldn't she? It... Well, I can't see why she'd do that. She isn't your sister? No, I don't understand it. She, she's my fiance. I don't understand it at all. Uh, where is she? I better talk to her. That's a good idea. Room 317, Brighton Arms. I'll be there with her, waiting for you. Oh! <laughs> 
which, in a way, was how it worked out. Except that I waited for him in the corridor outside her room. I left Marsha where I found her. She was on the bathroom floor, where she died from wounds inflicted by the proverbial blunt instrument, and where her lies had died with her. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. But first... And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Lambert? Yes? It's all right. I'm Dollar. Oh. Didn't take you long to get here. Where'd you phone from? Just around the corner. A bar. Well, why do you ask? Where's Marsha? Marsha's dead. I don't believe you. I want to go in there. She isn't dead. Let me in there. Come on. Use your head, will you? There's nothing. Oh, oh, oh. oh you're on. I'm sorry. Look, you don't want to go in there. Believe me, you don't. There's nothing you can do for her. <laughs> She can't be dead. She can't be. Come on. Where? Why? I want you to come up to my room with me. You've got to do two things. First, give me every reason you can think of why this should have happened. And then, before the police get here, you'd better start rehearsing a story of your own. Now, I'll have it the first hole in Marsha's story is that she wasn't in Thebes while you were working on your ruins. That's right. I didn't even know her then. I met her in the hospital in Alexandria after my accident. I was there for two months, you see. She was my, my nurse. But, but she did know about the relics, that statue and the scarab that I haven't seen. Oh, y- yes. Yes, here it is. Uh, this, this is the scarab. Oh, yes, she knew. We talked about my, my little deceit. Well, how little is it, really? You you talk about two attempts on your life. Now we have actual murder. You'd better let me have that scarab. Oh, yes, yes, of course. But surely you don't think the relics are at the bottom of this? They're rare, but not valuable enough for this. Unless someone knows more about them than I do. I doubt that. I've made a thorough study of the 12th dynasty and King Amenemet the Third. It's a carving into his head. What do you know about a man named Ammon Hyksos? Uh, and another whose last name is Drummond. Hyksos, uh... Ammon Hicksus? You know him? Does it ring any kind of a bell? No, I, I, I'm afraid not. And Drummond means nothing. Oh, all right. Let's try the two attempts on your life. What about them? Well, they happened on the nights of the 17th and the 18th. Both of them could have been accidental, except that... Well, the same small man stood near me both times. It would be too much for me to hope you, you could describe him, I suppose. Well, it, it, it was dark... Both times I was on the promenade deck and something heavy was thrown or pushed from the deck above. I reported the second one and the ship's officer apologized for the carelessness. But you thought enough of it to disappear. Oh, well, I certainly did. Instead of going to the police. Yes. Oh, I suppose it was wrong, but you must understand. I was desperate. Well, we'd better go down to the third floor. I, I hope the police think more of your story than I do. <laughs> In 20 minutes, room 317 really looked like a murder scene. The place was swarming with New York's finest, white with fingerprint powder, and blinding with flash bulbs. The lieutenant, to whom I made my statement, looked as if he thought I was as crazy as I thought everybody else in the mess was. But then he changed his mind. Dollar! Hey, where is that insurance stake? Ah, uh, here I am. Him in the bathroom. Oh, there you are, Dollar. Yeah, find a suicide note or something? What'd you say that name was? Ammon, uh... uh Hicksus. Yeah. Well, I guess there aren't too many ways to spell that one, so this must be it. Pillbox. Let me see that. Prescription from Alexandria. Dr. Ammon Hicksus. We'll put a tracer on that phone number you took off him first thing in the morning. Yeah. Hey, uh... Are you going to take Lambert in for questioning? I guess we'd better. Routine. He's clear as far as I can see. Well, do something for me, will you? Uh, 
Have your doctors run a test of that plastic ass of his. And call me in my room, huh? A test for what? Well, just look it over. It would make a handy, blunt instrument, if nothing else. Expense account item three, seven fifty. A few late cocktails, a rare steak, and coffee in the Brighton Arms dining room. After which I picked up an armful of extra additions so I could catch up on what I'd been doing. I self-operated my way to the eighth floor and started toward my room. I was looking forward to a hot shower, but I didn't get it. I was still looking forward, but into a familiar gun muzzle. This is the one, Garrett. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Dollar. May I introduce myself, sir? Garrett Drummond at your service. Our meeting has been postponed too long. Well, there's a difference of opinion on that. You will please open your door. How can I refuse that pint-sized invitation you're still carrying? After you, sir. And I need to remind you that my friend here is prepared for any rash move upon your part. Look, I'm tired. I don't have a rash move left in me. Close the door, Ammon. I suggest that you sit there, Mr. Dollar, in that unsightly straight back chair. Thanks a lot. And now, sir, I shall plunge right to the point. Where is that scoundrel Bruce Lambert? Well? I think I just decided that I don't know. Please, we have no wish for violence. You always say that with a gun in your hand. Well, let's get started. You make your pitch, I'll make my refusal, and we'll see where we go from there. I have already made what I consider to be a generous offer for so unimportant a bit of information as merely the whereabouts of Lambert. Two thousand dollars. But if it will expedite matters, I am prepared to expand my offer by another thousand on the spot, sir. The higher you bid, the greedier I get. What makes Lambert so important? A problem which is entirely out of your province, my boy. How much do you know of Egyptian legend, sir? Oh, no more than a dollar's worth. Ah, pity. A fascinating subject. Well, sir, Bruce Lambert has in his possession a certain object of great importance, both culturally and economically. Certain landowners in Egypt hold it in such high esteem, sir, that as a reward for its return to them, they would throw open to exploitation untapped oil fields, the richness of which would shake the very foundations of world economy. Are they shaky enough as it is? My boy, think what it would mean to a civilization fast approaching the depletion of its petroleum sources. New horizon, sir, a brave new world. Lambert owes to us all relinquishment of this object so that it may serve humanity. You're right. And it may be easier than you think. A splendid, sir. Where is he? Which relic is it? The black statue your playmate could have picked up for free? It is King Amenemet Scarab that I would discuss with Lambert. I demand to know where he is. Why waste time on him? I've got the Scarab. I find that most difficult to believe, Mr. Dollar. Well, I'll show No, it. no, no. Keep your hands away from your pockets. Ammon will save you the trouble. Ammon. Please remain still, Mr. Dollar. My wish is for peacefulness. Sure. Right coat pocket. He speaks truly, Garrett. Here it is. What's the matter, Garrett? You don't have that brave new world look anymore. Uh, I should be the first to admit, sir, that the lie has been put to the tail I created upon this useless geek hall. But, Mr. Dollar, now that we are forced to fall back upon the truth, I remind you that it sometimes hurts. Your position has not been... The desk knows I'm up here. Answered, Mr. Dollar. But be cautious. Unfortunately, I do not share Ammon's aversion to violence. Yeah? Dollar? That's right. This is Lieutenant Black. Say, was that a hunch you had about that cast of Lambert's? Why do you ask? Well, if it was, it was a good one. The doctors won't let us take it off, but we cut into it. It was put on in three layers. The middle one was wrapped in narcotics. Yeah? Don't be so modest, Dollar. There must be 300,000 bucks worth. No, sometimes it's a whole month before we get that much. Looks like the work of your friend, Dr. Ammon Hicksus. Yeah. Oh, wake up, Dollar. I want to check Lambert's statement with yours. I'll have you there in ten minutes. Goodbye. Okay. I commend you, sir, upon your show of intelligence. Who was it? The police. They're looking for Lambert. Oh, and what did they give as their reason? Narcotics. 
The story of a man bound for America who cracked up in a car, and while he was unconscious and being patched, said narcotics were put in his cast by a Dr. Ammon Hicksus, probably assisted by a nurse named Marcia. But there is no proof. Ammon, we'll waste no time on evasion. Yes, we use the boy. A courageous scheme, but for that silly goose of a girl. She was the true conspirator, and the traitor as well. She happened to fall in love with the guy. Ah, the romantic Atlantic crossing. An empty proposal of marriage suddenly becomes more important than actual coin of the realm. But enough of that. The police are looking for him, and... Ah, teeth, so am I. Where is he? I don't know. Ammon, call his hotel in 39th Street. No. Wait, my friend. The police must be watching that. Are they, Mr. Dollar? Well, that's where his personal things are. If I were the police, I'd be watching. Yes, we seem to find ourselves in such a position that we must at least pretend to see eye to eye, sir. Very well. We shall wait here. The chips are down, so to speak. Ammon. Yes, sir. Take the pistol. Into the bathroom with you. With the door slightly ajar, you shall have a splendid command of the arena, as it were. Yes, Garrett. And remember, the stakes are high. Yes, Garrett, I will remember. And now, Mr. Dollar, it would seem that little remains but the waiting. <laughs> Drummond settled himself on the bed, facing the door, his pudgy hands folded over his bulging waist. I was still in the desk chair, facing him. As usual, the police were late. Twenty minutes passed before we heard the knock on the door. Your guest, Mr. Dollar. Come, we shall go to the door together. Now, keep your back to me and open it. It's your party, Drummond. Come in, Lambert. Doc Lambert, the police. I'm a shoot. Hammond, oh, my friend, help. Drummond's wound wasn't half as excruciating as his call for help. The doctors report that his shoulder will be in a cast, that as soon as the state of New York can gather a jury he will stand trial on the charge of first-degree murder. The body of Ammon Hicks's was taken to the morgue. As an insurance company, you are probably less interested in that than in the fate of your policyholder, Bruce Lambert. That's explained in expense account item four, $280 hospital bill paid in advance. In view of the possibility that there may be others interested in that $300,000 cash of narcotics he has to carry around with him until his arm is okay... I thought it would be safer to keep him under wraps. Oh, by the way, while he was lying there, helpless, I sold him a policy for you covering the scarab and that carved head. Expense account total, $456.90. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Paul Dudley and Gil Dowd with music by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien can currently be seen starring in Harry M. Popkins' United Artists production, D.O.A. Featured in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Jay Novello, Ed Begley, John Daner, and Pat McGeehan. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Join us again next week when Edmund O'Brien returns in another adventure of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. $54,000 is burning a little old hole in that little old jackpot of Sing It Again this week, just waiting for somebody to light up the right answer and drop the cash and prizes in his lap or her lap. Dan Seymour gives the gals the same chance he gives the fellas when he starts putting in those calls from coast to coast. 
So be listening this Saturday when Sing It Again and the $54,000 Phantom Voice come your way on most of these same CBS stations. This program was transcribed in Hollywood. Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS, where yours truly, Johnny Dollar, meets adventure every Friday night, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.